assalamu alaikum bismillah rahman rahim we will continue with the topic of mechanical properties of materials now we will actually see what does this mean by mechanical properties and the properties which can be determined or observed by application of of the mechanical force or energy as we have already discussed that the mechanical force is a force which requires direct physical contact now one of the important properties of the material is the strength now in general perception or as a layman we can define this strength as the carrying capacity load carrying capacity of any of the material but from engineering point of view we define strength as the maximum value of stress which a material can sustain without failure now how to express the failure or define the failure we take failure in two ways failure due to plastic deformation in the material and due to permanent rupture or the fracture and these terms are associated with the uh type of materials again the ductile materials which go for the deformation prior to the fracture and the brittle materials they straight away go for the rupture breaking of the material or fracture so if we consider the ductile material these materials go for large degree of deformation prior to the rupture or fracture now this is estimated are calculated on the basis of the percentage elongation the which material is ductile and brittle now the percentage elongation is measured by using this expression the final 
length of the material minus the initial length upon the initial length multiply by 100 now if the percentage elongation is more than 15 percent in any of the material we say the material is complete ductile material and if the percentage elongation is less than greater than 5% and less than 15% we say the material is intermediate ductile material and the if the percentage elongation is less than 5% we say the material is brittle material now as we have already discussed that the strength is that value of the stress which can a material sustain so stress is very important to calculate the strength of a material so if we see the expression of stress that is sigma is equal to p upon a now this p is the resisting force and this a is the area now resisting force we are instead of resisting force we are writing p because this resisting force is equal to the applied load so in this expression we see that there is the stress is directly proportional to the load and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area and it is not having any relation with the material so we can say the stress does not stress does not depends on the material now how to go as we know the strength of the material is the stress value which a material can sustain now this we will explain or discuss with taking two of the examples let's say we have two materials and these are subjected to tensile loading now one material we said is of steel and other is thread wire and the cross section of both the materials is of same a okay. now we start increasing the load now what is happening this is p upon a now for both the cases the area is same and the applied load is same so we 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 can say if this we the steel specimen we express with this a and b so we say that this a sigma a is equal to sigma b 
the stresses going to build in these materials that is same but by virtue of our experience we know that this thread bar is going to break earlier than the steel so we can say that steel has high or more strength than the thread wire now actually this strength helps to strength helps for selection of material for any of the application or suitability of the material for any of the applications now considering a stress strain diagram for the case of ductile material and let's say this is the stress strain diagram for ductile material and in that we know that material after reaching i draw it again now after material reaching a point there is a deformation that starts now this point is known as the yield point or yield stress or you may call this yield stress now for ductile material the failure criteria that is based on the yield stress for tile materials normally the yield stress is taken as the failure criteria because the material is not going to recover and it is not usable for any of the component so the other types of the strengths that is the tensile strength which is the maximum value of the tensile stress which a material can carry then we have the compressive strength the maximum value of the compressive stresses which a material can carry and likewise the shear strength the maximum value of the shear stress which a material can carry now strength is the maximum value of the stress that a material can carry and if we represent this strength with this s symbol now one thing is very important to incorporate that is a factor of safety safety so that the material does not fail in the field now if 
let's say if we take this sigma is greater than or equal to or greater than the strength or this tau is greater than the strength value then certainly in this case the material will fail so we incorporate the factor of safety which is the strength upon the designed stress or we may express as the failure stress upon the permissible or allowable stress let's say if we talk of one of the material and we say that the material strength is 300 mega pascal so as a designer we will say that the permissible the, des the design limit should be up to 100 mega pascal the material should, should not be loaded beyond this 100 mega pascal so we will get this factor of safety as 3 and this is a dimensionless value now coming back to how to calculate this factor of safety coming back to the basic expression first that is sigma is equal to p upon a load is there we have to apply that very load now considering this sigma or even you can take this tau is directly uh, inversely proportional to the cross sectional area now what is happening here to calculate the factor of safety for this specific case we say that sigma design is going to be the original the strength of the material is 300 mega pascal and we use the factor of safety 3 so we will get the design or the allowable stress value that is 100 mega pascal now considering this expression this sigma is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area now as this stress goes down this cross sectional area is increasing so we can say with the increase of the factor of safety the dimension of the components that also increases so we can write this factor of safety correlation mentions of the components now with the increase of this factor of safety the dimensions are also increasing now we will end this discussion here allah hafiz